Live from New York City, it's the Wendy Williams Show. Today, Kirstie Alley is here talking about looking for love and her recent weight loss. Plus, the cat fight continues. Is Katy Perry planning to get revenge on Taylor Swift during her Super Bowl performance? And all the latest juicy hot topics. Now, here's Wendy. It's Friday, the weekend is here. Let's get started, it's time for Hot Topics. I can't disappoint at all with that cheer. <laughs> Start throwing tomatoes. Okay, so Katy Perry's 30, Taylor Swift is 24. Now you know Katy is gonna be at the Super Bowl for the halftime show, okay? Yeah. Um, now these two girls have been going through a battle that I wish would just stop and because Katy's older, I'm taking it upon her to you know, woman up and leave this alone. Okay, remember when I was telling you that they, that um, Katie reportedly stole Taylor's background dancers? Yeah. Okay, oh, you do remember that. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, Katie was seeing a DJ Diplo at one point and Diplo got on social media and told, you know, said that Taylor needs to buy a booty or, or something to that effect. <laughs> Um, and so, you know, then, then Katie is reportedly con gonna concoct this plan to uh, diss Taylor during the Super Bowl halftime show. Ooh. And I see, my thought is, why would you take a platform like the Super Bowl, even though it's good for my business, <laughs> you know, we'll have something to talk about, but why would you take such a great platform like doing halftime at the Super Bowl? I mean, that's a big deal, you know? And, and even waste time talking about, you know, Taylor Swift or trying to diss her or something like that. Like, when you don't like somebody, pay them dust. Yeah. And that, right? At least, that's my approach to not liking somebody, you know? Um, now, they both dated John Mayer. Yes, exactly. Now, John is allegedly back with Katie. So maybe the diss might be something like halftime at the Super Bowl, John comes out with, you know, Katie to do, we, um, to do, uh, like, shake it off or, you know, do it like a Taylor song. You know, maybe, maybe. But I gotta tell you something, and I know this Taylor Swift is having her moment right now, and it's terrific for her. The world is revolving around Taylor and her music. But Katie, you've been there, you've done that, and you're still doing it. Now, let me just run down um, these girls, you know, uh, comparing them. Okay, Taylor has seven Grammys. Katie has none. Oh. I know! <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not finished. Okay, okay. Taylor has 50 million, dollar, uh, 50 million uh, Twitter followers. Katie has 62.9. Oh. Um, <laughs> um, and social media, I guess that matters. So, so far, Taylor is winning, or um, Katie is winning, because she's got the Grammys and she's got the Twitter followers. Um, even though right now, it's a Taylor world. Um, who's prettier? Yeah. Okay, wait, whoa, whoa, now, now see. <laughs> Okay, you know, 
You know, here at the show, we do a clapation poll. So now, who thinks Katie's prettier? Clap. <laughs> who thinks Taylor's prettier? Clap. It looks like Katie won by a slim one. I can't picture which one's prettier. I think, I think that they're both good looking, um, but Taylor has never performed at a Super Bowl halftime. I know. So Katie, you are winning. Leave this girl alone. And just l listen. There's plenty of people through the years that I've had falling outs with or whatever, and, and we don't get along. But you know what? I act like they're invisible, you know? And I definitely, like if I walk into a cocktail party and one of my enemies is there, I'm not leaving. You know, if anything, it'll make me twirl a little harder. Uh, number one. And, but you act like they don't even exist. Don't even try to talk to them, kill them with kindness or anything like that and just give them the stare. You know the stare. Yeah, well, I'll show you how to do it. Okay, so say I walk at the party and I see you and you're my enemy. <laughs> see? Just, just, just a stare. <laughs> Anyway, uh, good luck, girls. I wish you both would just leave this alone. You're both winning in our world. Well, you know, I'm not saying I'm, I'm Cleo the psychic or anything like that. All I'm saying is that over the years, there have been a lot of things that have happened on this show from my mouth that have actually come true. Like Rosie being on The View. Just, you know, one example. Um, With that in mind, Pitbull has his eyes set on a new woman. Guess who? Jennifer Lopez. <laughs> I know. I, I love them in my mind as a couple. I love them. And when Jen was here the last time, if you were watching that show, I told her, I said, you know, I think that it, it always looks like you and Pitbull have had something going on. Yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah. Like, look at that. Look, look. <laughs> Right? She is on top of the situation. Well, reportedly Pitbull has had a crush on Jennifer for years, but didn't want to act on it because she wasn't single. But now that she's single, he's ready to make his move. He feels like in addition to liking her and everything, he feels like they would be the new like Brangelina or maybe like Jay-Z and Beyonce or something like that. I say this is fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, she's always said she loved, well she'll be here in a few weeks so I'm gonna try to make this happen. <laughs> Guadalupe, I know you're watching, just, you know, and if you can assist me in making this happen, it'd be terrific, just to see where it goes with these two. Listen, she's 44 years old. We know that she adores a younger man. He's a younger man, he's 33 years old. Now, 33 is young and 44 is a little old to be having more kids, but he doesn't need more kids. Reports are saying he has six. <laughs> you can't, you can't even clap with that, can you? You're like, what? All right, well, some reports are saying that he only is four, but, but we'll go with six, just in case there are six. We don't want the other two to feel, you know, feel left out. <laughs> Look, I don't know who the baby's moms are, but apparently, you know, Armando, uh, I know, Pitbull, Armando. <laughs> apparently, he's taking care of everyone very well because no one talks to Life and Style Weekly, the National Enquirer, or whatever. You know, that, that's what a man does. You take care of your business before your business takes care of you. <laughs> Jen's got two children already. She doesn't need any more children. I just think that this would be great. They could tour together. The love would be spicy, right? They'd be a Latin power couple. You know what I mean? Do we have a Latin power couple? No, Sofia Vergara, she's marrying a gringo. Yeah, no, no, yeah. A hot gringo, but a gringo, you know? I love it. And he smells 
so good. Like when you hug him, he smells, I've hugged him. He smells so good. And he looks so good in a suit and sunglasses. You know, and he, he can pay his own, he can pay for dinner. You know, I, I know, um, like, like Patty Stanger has said in the past that, you know, um, you don't date down, you date up. And she's also said about um, Jen that Jen leads with her privates. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, in other words, you know, always looking for love and like that. But, you know, she's standing in her truth. I, Jen, can you please lead your privates to Pitbull? <laughs> please. <laughs> so good, so good. Cause here's another thing that I talked about here. Just why just the other day I was saying, George and Amal won't last. Oh. Do you remember? Yeah. A lot of you were hating on me on Facebook. That's okay. But guess what the word on the street is? No. The marriage is already in trouble. No. I just found that out this morning and I was like, wow. No. Me and my executive producer, David Perler, we predicted this. Oh. And so, okay, Amal, who's a top attorney and very highly educated. You know, there's, there's education. You know, like Gina Davis is in Mensa. Those are the genius people. But she's a fun girl. You know what I mean? There's education and then there are people who are so educated that they're not fun and they don't know how to have a sense of humor and a stick in the mud. Like, I, I just can't, I can't with that. So apparently she can't with him because <laughs> She reportedly is getting sick and tired of George's Hollywood friends and Hollywood scenes, and they, um, she feels that it's all beneath her. Oh. Well, as smart as you might be, Amal, apparently you've got no street smarts. <laughs> you know, it's a book smart thing. I mean, why would you accept his ring? Uh, you saw the lifestyle, oh, I know, you were seduced. You were seduced by the, the Prada and the Gucci and the diamonds, oh, and, and you were, and, he, and he's fine, <laughs> but... And he's fine. Uh, and so, but the ether is worn off now. You know, Jonah Hill is one of George's best friends. It's like, you know, when you first meet Jonah Hill, I guess, you know, he comes to the house, she's probably like, oh my God, it's Jonah Hill. You know what I mean? Like she's used to uh, the banking or the, the, the lawyer world. She's not used to the celebrity world where, you know, celebs just drop by and sit on the couch, you know, and you make the wings for the guys. When the guys come over, do you make wings for them? No. I, I'm a wing maker. Like, I, I, I'll make the snacks. I have no problem doing that. You know, I, I like a normal life at home, you know, and for me, that's normal. To, I don't feel as though it's beneath me. But anyway, back to them all. So look, apparently, you know, he's tired of, um, she's also tired of George's friends tagging along on their vacations. Well, I'd be tired of that too. There's Cindy Crawford and Randy Gerber <laughs> and, and Amal and uh, George, and they're all on vacation at a time where they just got married in September. Aren't they supposed to be glowing and in the honeymoon phase? Yeah. Yeah. I have never, nor will I ever, go on a vacation with another couple. Let me tell you why. And we know some nice couples, but I don't want a vacation with you. You know why? Because I work too hard to have to continue being forced to have guarded conversation while I'm on vacation. I work, like I work too hard. I don't care if we go on vacation on separate flights and you stay down the street at another hotel. I still don't want you to be there. I, um, do, clap if you're like me, you don't want a vacation with anybody but you. Yeah! Yeah. Anyway, you know, Amal, you should have thought about that before you accepted the ring, number one. And George, number two, um, you know, he fashions himself in my mind as some sort of politician. He's always going to Washington to complain about something, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and he probably liked dating a very, very smart woman. But even after a while, you know, that wears off. And you just, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So like I told you earlier this week, I give this marriage, well, the, t the clock is now ticking. <laughs> That's all, we can move along.
okay. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't clap for so long. It's only a one hour show. <laughs> I'm playing. Let your freak flag fly. fly. Um, okay, look, um, <laughs> Floyd Mayweather, everybody, is always showing us exactly how rich he is. Oh. Well, well, well he, yes, he is rich, sir, I know. <laughs> if, if you've ever seen him on social media, he's taken pictures with wads, you know, stacks of $100 bills, um, you know, all kinds of stuff, you know, the trappings of being rich. Well, look at what he posted recently, his car collection on Instagram, okay. <gasps> Do you see? There are a couple of cars on this side too. You can't see them. Yeah. Okay. I'll tell you what you're looking at and then I'll give you my opinion. I always do. All right. There's a $300,000 Ferrari and then there is a $200,000 Porsche, a $450,000 Lamborghini, two more $300,000 Ferraris, a $45 million jet, three $2.2 million Bugattis, and that's a total of $52 million sitting in front of you. I love my people. Cause you know this is a my people thing. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It, it, you, this is very black. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, I have my black ways too, but but I don't, I wouldn't put them on Instagram, you know, intentionally. Like if you happen to see me driving or or flying, or, no, I don't have a jet, but I'm just saying. <laughs> If you see me driving my jet, you know, you could take a picture, but I'm not putting it on my own Instagram. It's corny. Um, I, I think it's, but then again, his middle name is Money, you know, as in Floyd Money Mayweather. He probably got teased a lot because his name is Floyd. He's also a really little man and he probably got picked on and wedgies and his lunch money stolen. <laughs> No, 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 I'm trying to, in my mind, I'm trying to, and I have nothing against Floyd. You know, as a matter of fact, I can't wait for you to sign the papers to fight Manny Pacquiao so I can get my tickets to see you win. But, like, like I have nothing against Floyd, but in my opinion, I feel like he's going so hard showing us how much money he has because all of his life, up until he learned to box and started winning, he was probably picked on something awful, you know? Be yeah, oh little man, you do you. See what the see what the fight. <laughs> okay, so Reese Witherspoon. She really? <laughs> they said, oh. <laughs> she really wants to focus on her career, but her husband Jim has other plans. He wants another baby, and Reese thinks. No, no, not now, the time is not right. You know, her career went up and then it started to go down and then it dipped back up when she, she wrote Gone Girl? She produced yeah. Gone Girl. Mm -hmm. So, you know, she might get an Oscar, you know, uh, her, yeah. We like, we like Reese. She's got a lot of things happening. You know, she might get that other Oscar. You know, she's on the tip of everyone's lips again. Look, we're talking about her again. So she wants to capitalize on this and get back in the game and do it big. In the meantime, she is 38 years old and um, she already has two kids with her ex-husband, Ryan. And uh, one, yeah, with Ryan. Remember when they were together? Yeah. 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 And it was really hard for her to get over him. You know, divorce is never easy and everything. I guess, you know, she, she was kind of bummed for a moment. Anyway, everything is sunshiny now. She's got one child with Jim and two with Ryan and he wants a second child. Well, for the first, you know what? I told you I'm working on my black and white because I think everything is black or white. I have no gray area. And I told you for 2015, that's, I'm trying to get a gray area. Well, I think I found one. 
in this problem right here. I, I, I think, uh, yeah, no, I think I have. Because you know, on one hand, on one hand, I feel like um, 38, she should you know, have the baby and then get right back into acting. You know what I mean? Um, being pregnant is not marketable, even when you're Reese Witherspoon, you know, you, you can't show up pregnant. Um, she doesn't know whether she'll be able to get pregnant at 40. Besides, since when do we just treat pregnancy so cavalierly? It's dangerous to be pregnant in your 40s. Like, if you can get pregnant at 38 as opposed to 40, do it, yeah. you know? <laughs> but it has been done, you know? And she can have her eggs frozen. Like, to me, here's the compromise. <sighs> All right, freeze your eggs tomorrow, Reese. But wait. <laughs> Tomorrow, Saturday, the office will be closed. Monday morning, look. Freeze your eggs first thing Monday morning. Freeze a lot of them, you know, because they, the, eggs, the eggs don't always take. You know, they tell you the eggs don't always take. And the older, I guess, your womb is, the more slippery it is, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> okay, look. And then, and then go to the Oscars, get your award, because you know you're probably going to get one, and ask him to give you a year and get pregnant at 39. You know what I mean? Just, just a year. And in that year's time, choose your pro uh, projects really care. Oh gosh, I don't know what to say to these people, but I sit here, so I have to say something. <laughs> Reese, this is a real pickle. Oh. Oh. Anyway, now you can clap. <laughs> But up next, it's time for Celebrity Lookalike. Don't go far. <laughs> On an all new Wendy. Roll out the red carpet for this one. We're breaking down the Golden Globes. All the dresses and all the hot messes. And the new year means all new shows. We've got your winter TV preview. Monday on an all new Wendy. Welcome back. It's time for Celebrity Lookalike. I love this. Okay, our first Celebrity Lookalike comes from Antonio J, who watches the Wendy show on BET in Manassas, Virginia. Antonio thinks that he looks like Samuel L. Jackson. So here's the real Samuel L. <laughs> <laughs> Why is he mean mugging us? <laughs> and here's Antonio. <laughs> well, if he was wearing glasses, I could probably get a better visual. Oh. <laughs> now, I wouldn't exactly mistake him for Samuel L, because Samuel L has a stronger nose, I think. But, and, but if, if Antonio takes off the glasses and the kango, he just looks like Anto Antonio. <laughs> and you have to shave. Then you can really go with that look, but yeah. Um, it's okay, Antonio. It's pretty, pretty good. Um, they like it, though. Okay. Our next celebrity lookalike comes from Amira S., who watches The Wendy Show on KTTV in Los Angeles, California. Amira thinks that she looks like Rita Ora. Uh, okay, so let's look at Rita Ora. Okay, now let's look at Amira. All right, don't be so hard on her. It's a, it's a, it's a fun game we're playing here. They say no, I have to agree with them, Amira. Red lipstick and blonde hair do not make a Rita Ora. However, <laughs> you are equally cute, Heather. Thank you, uh, um, Amira. Thank you. <laughs> Heather is our next celebrity lookalike. Heather H. watches our show on KDFW in Granbury, Texas. Heather says everyone tells her that she looks like Susan Sarandon. Okay, so here's Susan Sarandon. <laughs> and let's take a look at Heather. <laughs> I think so. I like it a lot. Yeah, the expressive eyes, that smile, and of course, the hair. Yes, nice job, Heather. Um, 
Okay, our next celebrity lookalike comes from Eric L, who watches The Wendy Show on KRIV in Houston, Texas. Eric thinks that he looks like the R&B singer Tank. <laughs> See, don't mess with me with Tank. I think he's such a nice looking man. All right, let's look at the real Tank. <laughs> now, let's scrutinize Eric. Yeah, it's everything. It's the eyes, it's the nose, it's the lips, it's the squinty stare, right? Yeah, yeah, good, Eric. Okay, and our final celebrity lookalike comes from Ramona Y, who watches The Wendy Show here in New York on WNYW Brooklyn. Uh, Ramona thinks that her grandson, Tyler, <laughs> looks like Renee Zellweger. <laughs> you are gonna stop right now, Ramona. <laughs> Let's take a look at the real Renee, okay? <laughs> And uh, let's take a look at Ramona's grandson, Tyler. <laughs> I love it. Yes, so cute. If you or someone you know looks like a celebrity, please share the photo with us. Go to wendyshow.com for all the deets. Up next, the one and only Kirstie Alley is here. First guest, and with her recent weight loss, there's a lot less of her to love. Please welcome back to our show, the fabulous Kirsty Alley. weight have you lost? 50. 50 Woo! pounds. Um, you know, you know I, I love the magazines, and they are always uh, picking on you for your weight. It seems like they, they won't stop, but I've not seen a complimentary picture of you in a while. I have been hiding for a while. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I go away to Florida and I hide. Yeah, there's no paparazzi there. Yeah, no, I haven't, well, once, but that was one guy <laughs> years ago. <laughs> um, how'd you lose the weight? I lost it on Jenny Craig, and their spokesperson. You're back with Jenny. I am back with Jenny. It's just, it just is sort of the perfect match. Yeah. Match for me. Because you were with Jenny for how long and how long ago was that? I was with Jenny for three years and that, I think it was from 2004 to 2007. And then you went on Oprah with the bikini. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Why, you regret that? Well, uh, you know, I was stupid. I thought, well, you know, They'll, and I said, no pictures. I had in my contract, no pictures. It yeah. didn't even dawn on me that people would take screenshots and then put them all over the place. Oh, yeah, wow. Yeah, it was a little bit dumb. And then you gained the weight back. Yes. Now, how'd you gain it back? What happened? Well, I just ate too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, sometimes you have men tragedies. Okay. We've all had men yeah, tragedies. Yeah. And you, uh, you know, I just went south, do you know? Yeah. Um... I read somewhere that you didn't start gaining a lot of weight until around 52 years old. Right, 53. Well, you're making me scared because I'm 50 and I want to know, is that the menopause? Like, what was, what was that all about? <laughs> no, that was the bitch guy. Okay, okay, the guy. <laughs> all right, so look, you look terrific. I know that you Thank turned you. 64 on Monday. Oh, Lord. No, no. You, you look absolutely terrific. Thank you. Um, how is the food, getting back to Jenny Craig, how's the food? The food is delicious. Look, I'm a foodie. That's uh -huh. how I gain a lot of weight. And uh, I, I, I've had different companies approach me over the years, and I just couldn't honestly say the food is delicious. But I think the food is delicious. I eat chicken fettuccine. I eat cheesy enchiladas. I eat brownies before I go to bed. You know, it's pretty easy, I yeah. gotta say. Yeah. Um, now, have you ever thought about plastic surgery? I have thought about plastic surgery because I've thought about, you know, I, I say to my friends, I just don't know how long I can hold this up, do you know? Yes. I don't, and, and then I think it would be easy to do this or it would be easy to do that, except I have a few things. One is I'm allergic to almost anything you put on my face, so I will never have Botox. Wow. I will never, I, I don't like general anesthesia. 
Which is why, yeah. Yeah, I, it scares me, and it freaks me out. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, if I can find some dude that could just do a little chop-chop, you know. I don't even know what the chop-chop well, chop is. While you're exactly. awake? <laughs> but, like, my neck, I just like to go like, Ooh, you, I wish yes. I could have sky hooks. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but I would never say never, but I don't... You know, it, it just seems like it's hard. It, 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 sometimes that doesn't turn out so well. In yeah. fact, most of the time, I don't think that turns out so well. Uh -huh, yeah. So that worries. Doesn't that worry you? Yes. It's like, whoa, what if you look worse? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then you would be screwed. By the way, speaking of screwed, I, oh. I miss... No, no, you know, I, as a viewer, I feel screwed out of the chance to watch Kirsty on TV Land. I like that show. When you had that, when that sitcom was on, it was the one... With you and Rhea Perlman and the idea of you being this Broadway actress and John Travolta yes. stopping by once in a while I mean, with your boyfriend. I feel screwed also. What happened? I, I don't know. I don't know. We were supposed to be picked up and they said we were going to be picked up if we agreed on a showrunner and we agreed on a showrunner. And at the final hour, they said no. I, I still don't even really know why. Well, I miss you. But TV I'm still land. sore from being screwed. You know <laughs> now... Hmm. Yeah. Let's talk about your love life. Oh, my love life. This is the most boring subject in the world, but let's go for it. Well, because <laughs> I heard that, that there was a while there that you just put men out of your life completely. I did. Look, I had been with someone since I was 15. You know, I've always been with a man. I'm very monogamous. I'd been in a very long marriage. I'd been with a bitch, whatever I mean. Then I decided that I, I was raising young children. The last time I've had a really serious relationship uh -huh. was 14 years ago. And my children are 20 and 22. And I really disagree with women who bring men into their lives too early, especially in an intimate way. I just don't think you should live with men when you have children. Yeah, yeah. And that's just... Because then if they go, then the kid has another heartbreak. And if they're creeps, then the kid has the creep, you know? Yeah, so. yeah. But, I mean, you could always date outside of your house and not introduce them to your kids because i feel like at, at my age i'm looking at um you know you use it or you lose it so for 14 years from the time you're 50 to 64 you know you know no you know what i mean but everything is going to work out for you listen you're a beautiful everything woman everything is going to work out for you uh, i'm gonna tell you why you <laughs> no 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 I just, you know, you talked about heartbreak and stuff, and no one wants to I know, but you that. know, I really, I, I'm over the heartbreak. I, I don't, I don't want a man in my life unless he's incredible, first of yes. all. Yes. And unless, you know, I, I'm not having children with a man. Is How you look at a man when you're 25 and how you look at a man when you're 60, it's two different ways. It's two different. You're, I, I, I want someone who's really smart, and I want someone who's a self-made person. I don't get along well with dilettantes. Yes, got, so got you. So I, I guess I'm pickier, but... Because before, you know, it was like, oh, my God, you're hot and you're not an idiot. I'll marry you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you're a very, very nice-looking woman. You have a ter Doesn't she have a great personality? Yeah. Men love that. You, you could date anyone you wanted. But I did hear back in the day yeah. that um, you could have had uh, Jack Nicholson. Well, Nich Nicholas. No, that, I, Nich Nichols, Nicholson. I don't think I could. I don't know about having him. What, what happened one time was that I'd won an Emmy, but my husband wasn't with me. I don't know, remember why. But I was Parker. out in the limo. and it, it was a stretch limo. I got in the limo, and all of a sudden the door opens, and Jack Nicholson pops in. He did it just like this. He pops in one side of the door, and the car, and goes, "Are you married still?" And I go, "Yes." He goes, "Okay." And then he pops out the other door. <laughs> well, <laughs> listen, not but I would date Jack Nicholson. You would? Yeah, I would date Jack Nicholson, but I, I don't know if we'd get along. We'd be a little crazy. Well, no, don't. One date, there's nothing wrong with finding out. Listen, I was in the supermarket yesterday. Yeah. And I was, you know, you read the magazines while you're standing in the aisle. Yeah. There's a magazine called Closer. Yes. And um, Jack is on the front. And he says he needs a relationship. He doesn't want to die alone. Look! This is your time! Well, I don't want to die with him. <laughs> <laughs> well... When you get back to Hollywood, you should look him up. I, well, you know, I think we'd be good friends. I'm looking for a good friend first. Uh, well, there you go. There we go. Right? Yeah. All right, look, Kirstie's going to stick around, everybody. Because she's looking for love, we're going to play a fun game called How You Dating. Don't miss it. <laughs> Eliminated Celebrity Apprentice. And from the hit comedy, The Middle. I have a very strong opinion about that. We like strong opinions here. Patricia Keaton talks hot topics. Tuesday on an all-new Wendy. Now everybody's a professional dancer.
Listen, we were talking about Dancing with the Stars because you know we were on the same season. As a matter of fact, every time I hear CeeLo's Forget You, I always think about you <laughs> because that was a song that you danced on. Let me give you some shoe cam. Oh, I'll get some shoe cam. They're not yeah. too exciting. <laughs> they're comfortable and they're warm. It's so freaking it co cold It's cold here, here I know. Oy. Okay, so look, um, since you are in the market for dating. Okay, let's have it. In 2015, we thought we'd play this little game with you uh, to find a man. It's called, How You Dating? Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> Kirsty, on your third date with a hot guy, yeah. he admits to you that he went to a strip club the night before. Do you A, tell him he's a misogynist and ask for the check, B, reserve judgment until you see if this is a habit, or C, ask him to take you next time. I do D, kick him to the curb. Okay. Do I get to take D? Wow. Why did I think you'd say C? I, I, no, 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 no. I don't, I don't want to do that goes to strip, strip clubs. clubs. You no. don't want to do that. No. Okay, see, we're getting to learn more about Kirsty. Yeah. Okay, okay. Here's another one. A month into dating a guy, he tells you he's best friend. his best friend is his ex-girlfriend. Do you, A, ask to see a picture so you can see if you're prettier than she is? <laughs> B, tell him he has to choose because you can't be best friends with your ex. Or C, tell him you have no problem with that and you want to meet her. C. Oh. Really? <laughs> see, that's why I'd be like, D, kick him to the curb. Like, I don't like any of this, and I'm not going to try to break you up with your best friend. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I, I can see how you could end up best friends with someone that you didn't want to end up being lovers with. Yeah. I'd be nervous that there'd still be drive-bys going on or something. <laughs> well, that's a different issue. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Kirsty. Yeah? The bill arrives after a great first date. Do you, A grab the bill and insist on paying. B, <laughs> sit back and relax. He's the one that asked you out, so he should pay. Um, or C, reach for your wallet and offer to go Dutch. Uh, I, I would say, it, uh, my policy is if I ask you out, I pay. If you ask me out, you pay. That's what I say too, exactly, yes, yes. Okay. And here's your last question. On a first date, oh, excuse me. On a first date, the guy has his phone on the table and checks it periodically. Do you, A, use it as an opportunity to check your own phone, B, ask him to put his phone away, or C, give him a break because there could be worse things he could do? Well, I would, on a first date, unless he was incredibly exciting, I'd probably want to be on Twitter, so. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna be like this, yeah, woo, yeah, oh, I hear you, oh, yeah, I know. I wouldn't care. You wouldn't care? No, I, I, I know. That's what I, I said that also. All right, so we got a chance to learn more about Kirsty, and of course, we got the information about Jenny Craig. For more information about Jenny Craig, go to wendyshow.com. Nice to see you again. Good to see you. Good to see Ask you. Wendy is next. Wendy Show whenever you want on my YouTube channel. Hot topics, celebrity interviews, and of course, my legendary after show. It's all on YouTube. Subscribe today. Yeah. Welcome back. Everybody have a seat except for you. It's time for Ask Wendy. How you doing? Hi, Wendy. I'm Rhonda from Philly. How you doing? Hey, Rhonda. I've been with my guy for eight months, okay. but he's always on his cell phone, texting and posting things on Facebook. And so I want to know, what should I do to make him pay more attention to me? Or is this a deal breaker? Well, you put up with it for eight months. Would you like, would you like to continue further? Like if he got off social media? Absolutely. While... Okay. Is he a cardiologist or somebody on call? Absolutely not. <laughs> I, I mean, because for many of us, work is a 24-hour thing. No. He doesn't have a 24-hour job. Okay, so he's putting stuff on Facebook and stuff. Everything we do or whatever he's thinking, he loves the attention and spotlight. So at dinner, at the movies, on vacation. Not, this is not the guy for you. This is not the guy for really? you. Really? He's not going to stop this. I mean, you can have a conversation with him and see how it goes for the next month, but this is not... I don't think this is the guy for her, you know what I mean? Wow. All right, good luck. Thank you. Uh, you know, and I'm, sh and I'm shocked, because I don't know how old you are, uh -huh. but um, you, do you mind me asking? 
I am um, three times seven plus. Okay, exactly. No, the reason that I ask is because that's something that a 22-year-old does. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? That's not something that grown people do. I agree. All right, good luck Thank finding you. a new one. Thank you. Mm -hmm. How you doing? How you doing? Hi, Wendy. I'm Victoria. How you doing? Hi, Victoria. I'm 22, and I'm graduating from college in May, and I still love my mother. And I love my mother, but she is always in my business. She smothers me. Like, I have a curfew still. She always wants to know where I'm at, who I'm with. Even though I tell her, she's still always in my business. I love my mom, but, like, how do I tell her to back off nicely without hurting her feelings? Well, you just did. Oh, I can't move <laughs> Um, I, but I will tell you, you know, if you don't like the rules in my house, then move out. I mean, I'm still going to grad school next year, so, like, I still have to live with her, but, like, I want to just be like, I love you, but just don't want to be with me all the time. I know you're so Oh, she mom. wants to be with you yeah, all the like, time, Yeah, like, she wants me to be home all the time, and it's like, I don't want to be home all the time. Okay, you, you need to figure out a way to find some place to live while you're in grad school. Yeah. Okay. And if, if I... I don't care if it's a bus station. <laughs> I, I would not be able to put up with that right there. And she's a single mom, so she's got nothing to do but be in your business. Yes. No, ma'am. <laughs> good, good luck putting up with that mess. Eye candy is next, everybody. Don't go away. We're back, and it's time for me to reveal our audience eye candy of the day. Everybody is stylish, but I only have one almost legendary diva fan. How you doing? To give away. So drum roll, please. <laughs> Today's audience eye candy winner is Ness Kalak. Come on down. <laughs> oh, really? You are doing a lot. Come on out here so everybody can look at you. Face the camera so all your fans can see. Did you say, hey, Aunt Wendy? How you doing? Did you call me Aunt Wendy? <laughs> No, I oh, hey, Wendy. No, because sometimes some of the young girls do, and I love that. No. Anyway, um, I love your head to toe look. Thank you. We were just talking about the faux fur vest just being, you know, very fashionable at the time. Tell us about everything you have on. Okay, so the faux, uh, faux, faux fur vest is from BCBG. I bought it last year for $150. Okay. My pants are from BB. They were $100. Uh -huh. And my bo my boots are Tory Burch, and they were $525. Tory Burch. Do you mind me asking you about your necklace? It's oh, very it's pretty. Oh, it's Michael Kors. It's beautiful. Thank you. Well, congratulations, thank Ness. Thank you. And thank you. Thank uh, you. We'll be right back. Good job. breaks, it's like a ratchet party in here. Wouldn't you agree? <laughs> anyway, on Monday, everybody, we're going to break, break down the red carpet from Sunday's Golden Globes, plus TV Guide's going to join us with the must-see new TV shows. I love you for watching. Today, have a wonderful weekend, and I'll see you next time on Where? Where?